In contrast to a combinatorial circuit, a sequential circuit is one in which the output depends not only on the immediate inputs, but also on the past history of inputs. So we're no longer computing a Boolean function per se, but rather seeing what output we get based on what inputs we had before. A common example of this is an SR latch, also known as an SR flip-flop. The S stands for set, and the R stands for reset. And this circuit basically implements a one-bit memory. And here is one way of writing it out. We have R coming in to a NOR gate. So we have the circle at the end to represent negation. And then this output goes along. And we'll call this output Q. This is the state of the circuit. However, I haven't drawn a second input here yet. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. But before I do that, note that the output here, Q, is going to branch off and then go back over here and be an input to another NOR gate. Now, the second input to this NOR gate will be S, the set bit. And out of this NOR gate will come a value which we'll simply call not Q. Now, the reason for this is that we're going to design this circuit such that the output here should always, after a short time delay, be the opposite of this output. So this will force consistency in the behavior of this circuit. Now this value will also be branched off and go back, and that is the second input to this NOR gate. So we have a situation where outputs are going back and becoming inputs to other parts of the circuit, which is why we have to analyze its behavior, behavior in sequence. Now, we can create something called a characteristic table, which is sort of like a truth table, but accounts for the sequential nature of the circuit. Now, in any given time, we have to worry about the inputs S and R, but we're also going to look at the value of Q. So we're going to treat these values as the inputs and consider all possibilities. So let me list those out. So these are all possible inputs to this circuit. We'll also need to know the value of not Q, but this, although it will be used to determine the behavior of the circuit, is not going to be treated as its own separate input because it should always have a value opposite of Q. So I'll simply fill out this as the negation of Q. Now since this is a sequential circuit, we, what we really care about is what these values are at some given time. So really, we're going to assume the inputs are Q and not Q at some time, T, and that the outputs are Q at time, T plus 1, and not Q at time, T plus 1. Now, in order for this circuit to behave properly, not Q at any given time must be the opposite of Q at that same time. To analyze the behavior of the circuit, we have to look carefully at the timing of these operations. So one important property we have to care about is that the circuit is bit stable. This means that if I give no input to the circuit, 
which really means that S and R have values of zero, that the value of Q and not Q will not change. So if there is no input, then the state of the circuit will not change. So let's confirm that's the case by looking at these first two rows. If I have zeros coming in and Q at time T was previously zero, then I'll follow this in order. So Q is a zero. That zero goes down here. I have two zeros coming into a NOR gate. Zero or zero is zero. The negation of that is one. Therefore, a one is coming out of this NOR gate. So that means the value of not Q at the next time step is going to be one, which is what it was before. Now that same one is going back through here. R is a zero. I have zero or one, which is a one, but then I negate it to get a zero. Therefore, the next value of Q, zero, these values match these values. That's good. However, if Q had previously had a value of one, then that value of one would have gone down this line into this NOR gate. One or zero is one, negated is zero. I get a zero coming out here. So the next value of not Q is zero. And then that same zero goes along this line I have zero or zero, negated becomes a one, the output is one. Once again, these values did not change. That means the circuit is bit stable. For these next operations, we have to assume we start from a stable point with zero inputs and see what happens when one of the inputs changes to one. So if R becomes 1 and the previous state of Q was 0, that means a value of 0 would have been coming along this line and a value of 1 would have been going along this line. So not Q is 1. 1 is coming into here to combine with an R value of 1. 1 or 1 is 1, negated is 0, so 0 comes out here, the value of q at time t plus 1 is 0. I have the 0 from here coming in with s's value of 0, 0 or 0 is 0, negated is 1, and I get a 1 coming out of this negation. Likewise, if I previously had a Q value of 1 and I suddenly set R from 0 to 1, then the value coming into this gate would have been 0 initially. 0 or 1 is 1, negated is 0. The new value of Q is 0. That zero goes down this line, enters into here. S is still zero, zero or zero, or zero is zero. Negated is one. The new value of not Q is one. Now let's look at what happens when we put the set bit to one. So starting from a position where we had zeros for R and S, but the state of Q was zero. If we set S to one, then Q's value, zero, would have been entering here. We would have zero or one, which is one, negated is zero. The new output for not Q becomes zero. And that zero goes along this line, enters into here, 0 or 0 is 0, negated is 1. The new value of Q is 1. Likewise.
likewise, if the initial value of q had been 1, and then we set s to 1 from 0, then this 0 becomes a 1. Previously, a 1 had been coming in on this line. 1 or 1 is 1 negated at 0, therefore not q is 0. That 0 also goes along this line into this gate. 0 or 0 is 0, negated is 1. The new output for q is 1. So see what happens here. In these two case, cases, the outputs match the inputs. That means that this circuit is bit stable. In these two cases, we are resetting the bit. That means no matter what it was before, the new value will be zero, and of course the negation will be one. So reset to zero, no matter what Q was before. In these cases, we will set Q to one, no matter what it was before, whether it was zero or one, it becomes one after the set bit signal. Now, these last two cases are a bit tricky. In fact, they're problematic. If I go from a state where both R and S are zero and then set both of them to one, then I have one coming along both. These NOR gates have one or something. It doesn't matter what it is. Once I negate it, the output will be zero. That means both of these will have an output of zero. In other words, I will not have the new negation of Q being the opposite of Q. They'll be the same. So these cases are therefore not allowed. We simply don't allow both the set and the reset to occur at the same time. Now there are ways around this restriction that we'll see in a different circuit. But before we move on, let's simplify this characteristic table into something a bit more readable. Let's just look at the behavior in terms of S and R. Then the value of Q at time T plus 1 will, in this case, simply be the same as it was before. So Q at time T plus 1 will be the same as Q at time T. In this case, I am resetting the bit, therefore I'll have a value of 0. And in this case, I'm setting the bit and will have a value of 1. In this case, simply not allowed.